carry on. Um, let's carry on. So, that as I was saying from the previous video, like adults, children may undergo psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and counseling. As I was saying, that teachers can start with that when you pick on a child and examine and see that there's something not right and you try to have that cognitive or talking therapy with them that will bring out the problems that they are going through so that you can either refer them or you can wait for a period of time if they are getting better with that sort of cognitive behavioral therapy that you're doing with them because sometimes teachers don't know that talking to the child and ascertaining their concerns is a kind of cognitive behavioral, behavioral therapy that you're giving to them. That counseling, that talk, that free talk that you have with them is some kind of therapy. If you don't know, I'm telling you today, it's a very good thing and you have to continue to do that to help them come out of it. So some might not need that referral because you've been able to ascertain their concerns and you've been able to give them the cake that they need that they have the confidence back and they can sort of carry on with their lives but if you don't chip in any sort of help or communication at all then they internalize it and it becomes a big problem for them in the near future so let's carry on they may still be given medications such as SSRIs but in smaller doses because they are not adults. However, administering potent medication like antidepressants to children is controversial. That is when it's gone beyond the normal stage and it's become very clinical and very excessive. That is when we call it a disorder. For them to have been given a prescription of antidepressants, then it means it's become a disorder. It's become a clinical case. So giving children antidepressants is another controversial situation in this day and age. Globally, anywhere that you are, giving a child an antidepressant is very controversial because you need to go through, the child needs to go through, through a set of clinical tests and examination and counseling because that medication is supposed to be the last resort. It should be the last resort because you can't enforce or you can't prescribe medication without going through the necessary protocols of establishing that really that individual last resort is medication so as a result other forms of treatment have become increasingly popular family therapy is a form of treatment in which the child meets a therapist together with the primary guardians and siblings so they sit around a table a round table talk through the issues at home Talk through the individual's issue and sometimes miraculously that kid that individual comes out of that clinical stage because it's a family thing so if there is any bullying going on there within the family if that individual is being bullied by his or her own sister or brother it gets sorted out if there's a problem with mom or parents sort of giving that child emotional stress or anything like that psychological stress or neglect it gets picked on and it gets sorted out so family therapy is a very good thing that parents and teachers need to recommend need to accept and need to embrace it before any other thoughts of prescription of any medical treatment please so 
Each family member may attend individual therapy, but family therapy is typically a form of group therapy and that works. Your sister is there, your brother is there, your mother is there, your father is there. If there is any problem in the house, let's sort it out now. Because if we don't do that, that problem is going to be persistent. That problem is going to be excessive. That problem is going to linger on for a period of time. It's going to affect that individual that is going through that anxiety disorder. And it's going to make it worse. You push that person if you don't do the family therapy to the state of medication. And that is going to be the, 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 the worst case scenario. Because you don't want your child to start taking all these antidepressants. So, let's carry on from where we left off. Art and play therapy are also used. Art and play therapy. So, you see, you have to exhaust all the resources before thinking of medical intervention. Art and play therapy. You go to a place whereby there are other people there. You play with them. You do your artwork. You draw. Sometimes you do your painting. Sometimes you do your collage. You do whatever you want to do in terms of art. There's going to be an, um, a specialist there who is involved in that area of discipline who's going to help you do the drawing, do the play get your mind off things a little bit as you are going through your activity if they are highly professional they'll be talking to you asking your questions you know so you develop some kind of therapeutic relationship with that individual and that kicks in nicely so that with time it is going to ease all your stress so it's very helpful Medication is the last resort. No, no way. No way. We don't want to go there at this age, at this time. We want to make sure that we exhaust all possible resources available that will help you to come out of your depression, of, of your anxiety. So, art therapy is commonly used when the child will not or cannot verbally communicate due to trauma or disability in which they are nonverbal. So sometimes nonverbal individuals also go through art and play therapy. But verbal kids too can go through that because at least it's going to keep them busy, it's going to keep their minds off certain anxious situations or certain traumatic situations that is having a flashback on their memory or their memory or their minds. So, nonverbal or verbal kids can engage with art therapy and play. So, participating in art activities allows the child to express what they otherwise may not be able to communicate to others. So, sometimes they draw mommy and daddy fighting, they draw your, um, older sister bullying him or her. They draw, falling down and banging their head. They communicate through the artwork that that professional is going to look on it and then perceive, and then assess and evaluate the artwork to know what they are trying to communicate or what they are trying to express. That comes through the painting or the drawing that they do. So, is a form of communication. In play therapy, the child is allowed to play. However, the please, as a therapist observes them. They, however, please, as a therapy observes them. So the therapist may intercede from time to time with questions, comments, and suggestions, as I was saying, exactly as I was saying. So the professional interrupts, intervene, cut through, get in, dig in, and try to form a long-lasting therapeutic trusting relationship with that individual so that they develop their confidence and they snap out 
of their anxiety disorders because medication is, should be the last resort we don't want our kids binging on medication so that is what